Hello, this tutorial will attempt to help you understand a train of four stimulus, right? Where you use your train of four monitor, let's say right after induction, to get your baseline four twitches and assess the strength of the neuromuscular junction along the muscle that you are monitoring. Typically that is the abductor pollicis brevis. So without neuromuscular blocker on board, let's see what happens. Okay, so let me um, orient you to this uh, slide. You can see a fenestrated capillary juxtaposed to the presynaptic neuron the motor end plate. Okay. You've got the nicotinic M receptors here. You've got true cholinesterase juxtaposed to the nicotinic N receptor. You've got pseudocholinesterase floating around in the fluid, the interstitial fluid, the plasma. You also have the nicotinic N receptor, neuronal receptor along the presynaptic neuron. You've got voltage-gated calcium channels along the presynaptic neuron. And you've got a depiction of acetylcholine-filled vesicles. So now that you understand the chart here, or the figure, what happens when you send that first twitch? Okay, you hit the button and the first twitch is on its way. The presynaptic neuron, the action potential will arrive. The voltage-gated calcium channels will sense that and allow calcium into the presynaptic neuron. The calcium, through a series of reactions, will prime the vesicles that are along the membrane for release and assist in releasing the contents of those vesicles into the synapse. Okay. Now these vesicles, these are, I'm sorry, these acetylcholine molecules will immediately begin to be biodegraded by plasma cholinesterase and true cholinesterase. But eventually you know that it will reach its target and the motor end plate potential will occur. Now you understand that the motor end plate potential will occur because this nicotinic N re M receptor, nicotinic muscle receptor, is uh, opened through the binding of two acetylcholine molecules to the alpha subunits. When that happens, sodium rushes in, depolarization occurs, and very quickly the acetylcholine is metabolized by the true cholinesterase that is near the nicotinic muscle receptor. But that's not the only thing that happens. Please note that the nicotinic N, the nicotinic neuronal receptor, is also activated by the binding of two acetylcholine molecules. Okay. When that occurs, there's a depolarization and there's a reason for this. The neuron senses that voltage through its voltage-gated calcium channels and allows calcium entry into the presynaptic terminal again. And what this calcium now does is it mobilizes this store, right, uh, to move along the membrane. It prepares the next round of release. And so it is in a configuration ready to react to the next stimulus. Well, that second stimulus from the train of four comes along. Here it comes. And you can see the voltage-gated calcium channels sense that voltage change. Calcium comes in. Calcium then will uh, work in concert with many proteins to release these vesicles that are along the membrane. Those vesicles release their contents of acetylcholine. You get the pre and post depolarization, presynaptic and postsynaptic depolarization. You know that the motor end plate will occur, but also remember that there's a voltage change along the presynaptic neuron 
that is going to be sensed by this voltage gated calcium channel allowing calcium in to prepare the next round of vesicles to move them along the membrane and get them into position. And you can see that here. So the third twit comes once again. The voltage gated calcium channel allows calcium in. Calcium in concert with other proteins will release the contents of the acetylcholine vesicles. You have pre and postsynaptic depolarization. You have voltage gated calcium channels presynaptically that sense that depolarization. Calcium mobilizes the next round of troops and they're ready for the next electrical stimulus. Here it comes, the fourth twitch, or the fourth stimulus, which will result in calcium entry. It will result in calcium working in concert with other proteins to cause the release of these acetylcholine vesicles, and acetylcholine will depolarize the motor end plate, causing the fourth twitch, and prepare the next round of vesicles. Now, I understand this is a simple cartoon depiction. Uh, in reality, this will not be empty, right? If there's no neuromuscular on board, the body's going to have thousands of vesicles as uh, you understand, you realize. But what I hope this does, it helps you understand each step that is occurring uh, fundamentally at the presynaptic region and the postsynaptic region of the motor end plate when you conduct a train of force stimulus. Thanks.